This time on Second Chance Ohana. Aloha! Melan Kaliki Maka! Merry Christmas, you guys! We are so excited about today's episode. We are doing a cozy winter collab hosted by Carol over at Flipping Drawers. Make sure to go over to his page and check out this playlist after you watch our video. There are so many great YouTubers doing cozy winter furniture flips. And we hope you'll stay tuned as we give an old lane chest a second cozy chance. Aloha, I'm Danny. In 2016, I moved from Maui to Arizona with my husband to be closer to my mom and pops who live just a few miles away. On our journey, Kyle and I expanded our family by adopting three tweens and of course Barkley, who helps make sure everyone feels like part of the Ohana. Mom and I love to hunt for used furniture and restore it because it's fun to be creative, use power tools, and of course make money. And because, like people, sometimes furniture just needs a second chance. I've been on the hunt for a vintage chest by Lane for quite some time. I've been looking for an MCM style, but once I saw this at Goodwill, I knew we could modernize it and give it a really cozy rustic makeover. So it has all the bones in place, but definitely a lot needs the change. We need to get rid of that pillow top bench, get rid of the handles, change out the base, and give it a fun flair. All the Lane Cedar chests I've been seeing on Facebook Marketplace have been in the range of $80 to $100. So when we saw this one for $25 and it was Senior Discount Day, we knew we needed to jump on it. All right, time to get started with this piece. We took some TSP alternative and washed this down very thoroughly and also rin rinsed it thoroughly. These faux drawer handles have got to go, so I'll get rid of those. Unfortunately, many children have suffocated from being in these chests and having the lids close on them. There's no way to get out once that chest gets locked. So obviously to prevent that from ever happening with this chest, we just need to remove the top mechanism just by unscrewing it so it's safe for any kiddo that wants to play hide and seek in here. This piece was definitely 70s and 80s feel and we want to modernize it. So we're going to use this fun little crowbar, which I never get to use enough of, and get rid of the little trim pieces on the end. You guys, what the heck is happening? My sander has turned into a bucking bronco. I literally don't know what's happening and just started doing this. So if you have tips for me or know how I can fix this, please let me know. I am fine pulling this all apart if I know what I'm looking for. But for now, let's switch over to my mom's Bosch. The top of this chest is just particle board, but it has a really thin veneer on it. So we wanted to sand down a patch and test it with the gel stain to find out if it was going to look decent at all stained with wood or if we needed to paint the top. Thankfully, this gel stain covers up so much, so even though it's still kind of green poking through, it's going to look great and add to the coziness with this gel stain on here. The body of this chest is going to be some wood and some paint, so we're gonna scuff sand the bottom two thirds where the paint's going, and then really dig in and give a raw sanding to the top third where I'll be staining. In an effort to modernize this chest, we're going to get rid of those holes and get rid of this line down the middle. So I'm using Bondo to fill in these places where the paint will be covering. 
Up above for the gerb holes, we're gonna do something a little different. So I learned this trick from Twitch over at Creep Designs by Twitch. And all you do is grab a bunch of toothpicks, stick them in the hole, use some wood glue so they stay nice and tight. And then once they fully dry, you just take your multi-purpose tool and saw them right off. And then just give a quick little sand afterwards. So since these toothpicks are made of wood, it definitely helps fill those holes and makes it a lot less obvious when you put stain on the top. Our goal here is to give an illusion of mountains when you look at this piece. So when we're separating the paint with the stain, we're gonna have kind of that wavy mountain top look. So that's what I'm sketching in here right now. Since we decided to use a white chalk paint on the base, I went ahead and started off with a layer of white primer and that will just help the white chalk paint adhere better and block any stains that might want to come through. It will also just help us to only have to do two coats of paint instead of three. Now that we're down to the bare veneer for this chest, we're gonna use our favorite gel stain. It's Hickory by Minwax. And there's a lot of different ways to apply stain. We usually just dip our lint-free cloths straight into the bucket, wipe it on, and then wipe off the excess. I'm leaving a little gap in here because we're gonna be adding some gold leaf. So I'm not too worried about butting up right against the white here. All right, it is time to do the first layer of chalk paint, but first we always give a quick sand to just even it out and make it ultra smooth before adding the next coat. So I'm just doing a quick sand with a 220 here. Just being real, you guys, I love working with Danny. We really are very fortunate that we work so well together, but sometimes you just get on each other's nerves. And here we are, we're painting away that first coat of white chalk paint, and we have very different techniques for painting. Oh my gosh, I don't know what happened, but I let loose and let her have it that day. Sorry, Danny. <laughs> well, you let me have it, but that was the first time in these six months of working together, so I think we'll survive. For this white chalk paint, we made a special do-it-yourself batch, and we what we did was we used a regular white latex paint, and we added some calcium carbonate to it to make it a chalk paint. Unfortunately, we did this project before we discovered how much we loved the Melange 1 paint. And we would have used Melange 1 instead if we had known about how good it works and if we had had some. Oh yeah, if you haven't seen our all-in-one paint review, we're going to put a link right up here in the right hand corner, so just click on that. It's very informative. Because the veneers on this chest are completely different woods, they don't match at all, even with the same gel stain. So we're gonna give the top one more coat to try to even it out to match the body.
Being my first time gold leafing, there was a lot of trial and error. So I'm gonna give you my favorite tips that by the end I felt like I'd finally figured out. Mod Podge worked great. So sponge it on and really let it get tacky before you put your gold leaf on there. Lay your gold leaf on as smoothly as possible and this is easiest when you get the cornstarch on your fingers. And then just gently peel off the edge so you can reuse that piece, but make sure to leave a lot left on the Mod Podge. Let it completely dry. And here I'm using a small paintbrush, an artist brush that was recommended. That was not the best method. Go use a big round like wax brush and just gently get off all that excess gold leaf. As always, we need to protect our finished pieces. So we found that just using some polyurethane and rolling it over the top of the paint and the wood stain and the gold leaf was our best solution. On the top of the chest, because it's a flat surface and we knew it would get a lot more use and abuse, we actually put on four coats of the wipe on poly. And between each coat, we took 600 grit sandpaper to just give it a, a quick sand and make it nice and smooth. You didn't think we were actually gonna keep this base, did you? I didn't think so. It's a little too 70s, 80s for this modern piece. So we're just gonna take out those screws and then it's demo time. We've been wanting to try building our own base ever since we saw DIY Wife's tutorial for this months ago, and this was finally the perfect piece that needed a new base. She uses red oak. Fortunately, our prices have just skyrocketed on oak, and we knew that the pine would be strong enough for this small, lightweight chest. So we just got the 2x2 pine and the 1x3 pine. And on her YouTube page, you can go check out that tutorial as she walks you step by step how to make your own bases for dressers and chests and all sorts of furniture projects. Making these bases first involves using a chop saw or miter saw. And I have a lot of experience with our miter saw and it is my favorite power tool we own. In retrospect, I really wish I had just sanded these before they were cut. Would have made it much simpler. But that's all right, we're gonna make it work even though it's hard to sand these tiny pieces. So I used three grits, starting with the 150, moving on to the 180, and finally the 220. And I only sanded the sides so that you're going to be able to see from the front when it's attached. Okay, truth be told, pocket holing is not my favorite thing. Anytime we've needed to do these and my husband and I have built cabinets, he is always in charge of the pocket holes. But I figured this is mine and my mom's business. It's time for us girls to do the work. So we have the cheapest pocket hole Craig jig system there is. After this, I'm definitely upgrading to the next step up because this requires a lot of manpower and a lot of muscle to push in. Now it's time to use all those pocket holes. So we're just gonna add a little wood glue in between before we attach them. That way, if anything happens with the screws and they get loose, this piece is still gonna stay strong together. In order to give this piece a nice cohesive look, we're using the same hickory gel stain as the rest of the chest. Mm -hmm. 
Using these special Craig screws, one and a quarter inch, we just drilled this base on with the rest of those empty pocket holes. Well, we finally finished the cozy winter chest. Do you remember what it looked like before? And here's what it looks like now. Well, I love the way it turned out. What do you think, Mom? I love it. I especially love the base, and I know you don't really love it, but it's, you know, it just turned out. I want it for my house. And I love the gold leafing that they look like snow cat mountains. Doesn't necessarily go with Arizona, but I love it. So, feels really cozy. Whoever gets this piece is gonna have a nice cozy piece for their home. So, let's talk numbers. How much did everything cost? I think it was 50 for the piece and all the materials. Yeah, because we got the piece for like 22 and then spent 27 on gold leaf mm -hmm. and paint and the wood for the base. Yeah, absolutely. So we're hoping to sell it for 250. We'll update and let you know. So we had so much fun in this cozy winter collab and we hope you'll go check out the rest of the playlist and all the other cozy flips. And make sure to comment, like, subscribe, let us know if this feels cozy enough to put in your home. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Aloha. And melakalikamakamo. Melakalikimaka. That just made the final cut right there. You tried so hard. I almost got it. That's funny.